Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of SoCal Sweat. April is Earth Month. This year, 2021, marks the 51st anniversary of this celebration. This year's theme for Earth Day is Restore Our Earth. I'm going to give you 13 tips and tricks to help contribute to saving the environment. And it also helps you with health and wellness in general. You know, if you can't do it for the environment, at least celebrate the only planet that offers chocolate. And get your loved one involved. Just simply tell him or her, help me get involved with this, and then you can go ahead and reuse me. We can recycle and refurbish, but then you can reuse me. Ha ha ha. Just a little bit of save the planet humor. So I'm going to give you 13 tips and tricks of how you can contribute, help to save the earth, and help yourself with health and wellness. In the meantime, which is just more of a bonus. We certainly face environmental issues that we've never faced before. Simple things like travel habits, diets, purchases, and infrastructure harm people in places all over the world. Our current climate change is occurring 20 to 50 times faster than any of the most rapid climate change events in Earth's history. But we can take action. There are so many little things that we can do to contribute. And I encourage you on social media to look up at Earth Day Network and any of these 13 things that I give you for possible actions, you can simply hashtag Earth Day 2021 or Earth Rise. And let's start with number one, my favorite subject, fitness. Specifically, eco-friendly fitness. Take your workout outside, jog, bike, hike, jump rope, or grab your yoga mat with some light free weights and resistance bands for an overall body workout. This is an awesome way to celebrate Earth Month and any time going forward. Sign up for an eco-friendly cause like a 5 or 10K in your city. You can go green in the gym. Just a few small tweaks. Bring a small towel with you to eliminate paper towel use when wiping down machines. Or you can invest in a BPA-free reusable water bottle that you can fill up at the fountain. A water bottle you can use over and over not only saves the environment, but it benefits your wallet too. Another helpful piece of advice, the higher you can set your incline on the treadmill, the less energy it will use. Burn those glutes, babies. How about some green workout gear? When it comes to buying equipment, you can search the secondhand stores, yard sales, flea markets, or from friends who no longer use them. And while you're at it, take it a step further by gathering any workout accessories you don't use and donate them or you know, donate them to sports leagues for kids that could really use it. Keep an eye out for eco-friendly yoga mats and gym totes, which could be used from recycled paper and TPE. And this is a 100% biodegradable and recyclable material. You can refresh after working out with vegan, biodegradable, GMO, and cruelty-free products. And finally, for a post-workout snack, you could actually make your own homemade nutrition bars. There are tons of healthy protein bar recipes out there that call for simple, clean ingredients such as plant-based protein powder, almond flour, nut butter, seeds, and dried fruits. So instead of buying prepackaged bars from the store, ditch the wasteful, non-recyclable wrappers, you're eliminating suspicious ingredients anyway, by making your own. This brings us to number two. Let's do a plastic or paper audit. Have you noticed when you order from Amazon, the exorbitant amount of packaging that you get? Well, one simple way is to choose consolidation of orders. Not only will you eliminate waste, but you also get a credit, sometimes up to three to five dollar credit on that. And did you know that we usually outsource to China? At least 25% of our waste goes to China and they sift through it and they are now no longer accepting our trash. So a lot of times landfills are actually just being filled without recycling at all. 
So it's up to us to do everything that we can. Here are some things that we can eliminate waste in plastic and paper. The first thing you can do is choose to receive your bills electronically as opposed to paper billing through the mail system. This eliminates paper. The next one I'll admit is a bit hard for me. Stop using plastic straws, even in restaurants. If a straw is a must, purchase a reusable stainless steel or glass straw. I have those of my own, but I do like plastic straws. I like to put them between my teeth and pretend I'm a rhinoceros. Um, yes, I could do better, admittedly. Use real cutlery versus plastic forks, spoons, and knives. Use a reusable produce bag. A single plastic bag can take 1,000 years to degrade. Purchase or make your own reusable produce bag and be sure to wash them often. Number three, also very difficult for me, give up gum. Gum is made of synthetic rubber, also known as plastic, but I do like them. Number four, buy boxes instead of bottles. Often products like laundry detergent come in cardboard, which make it more re recyclable than plastic. Yeah, that's a hard one too. Purchase food like cereal, pasta, and rice from bulk bins and fill a reusable bag or container. You save money and un unnecessary packaging. Reuse containers for storing leftovers or shopping in bulk. Use a reusable bottle or mug for your beverages even when ordering from a to-go shop. Bring your own container for takeout or restaurant doggy style bag since many restaurants use styrofoam. Use matches instead of disposable plastic lighters or invest in a refillable metal lighter. Avoid buying frozen foods because their packaging is mostly plastic. Even those that appear to be cardboard are coated in a thin layer of plastic. Plus, you'll be eating fewer processed foods. Don't use plasticware at home and be sure to request restaurants. Do not pack them in your takeout box. Ask your local grocer to take your plastic containers for berries, tomatoes, back. If you shop at a farmer's market, they can refill it for you. The EPA estimates that 7.6 billion pounds of disposable diapers are discarded in the U.S. each year. Use cloth diapers to reduce your baby's carbon footprint and save money. I don't have children. I feel like this would be difficult, but it certainly saves the environment. Oh, diapers. Oh, bathroom humor. Make fresh squeezed juice or eat fruit instead of buying juice in plastic bottles. Plus, it's healthier and it's better for the environment. Or you can make your own cleaning products that will be less toxic and eliminate the need for multiple plastic bottles of cleaner. Pack your lunch in reusable containers and bags. Also opt for fresh fruits and veggies and bulk items instead of products that come in single serve cups. And finally, reuse your same razor with multiple cartridges instead of buying plastic razors. And really, if they're not the five blade plastic, please throw it in the garbage. It will cut you. The next one is composting your garbage. Composting is as easy as setting aside a space and adding organic material, a little at a time, and the results are worth it. It makes for healthier plants, a bigger garden harvest, and less food waste. Here's what you need to know to get started. Green materials include grass clippings, coffee grounds, fruit and vegetable scraps, and most kitchen waste. These are high in nitrogen. And remembering this recipe of nitrogen to carbon, your pile will thrive. That's because achieving a good carbon to nitrogen ratio gives your pile what it needs to decompose quickly without orders. Now, here is just one example of what you can do to repurpose coffee grounds if you don't want to put them in the compost pile. Well, listen to this. They neutralize offensive odors. You can put them wherever there are foul smells. They are a great natural deodorizer. The refrigerator, the garbage disposal, your hands, your sneakers. This will all eliminate odors. How about a natural cleaning scrub? You can skip the chemicals and cleaners and try a handful of used coffee grounds to remove gunk from pots and pans. You can also use them on sinks, grills, and cookware. You can supercharge soil and repel pests. Not only can the nitrogen in used coffee grounds help boost fruit and veggie growth, but because of coffee's high acidity, it acts as a great natural bug repellent, especially against fruit flies, beetles, mosquitoes, slugs, and even fleas. You can just sprinkle those grounds on the soil, boost the growth, and protect from pets and fleas. You can treat dark under eye circles. The coffee grounds still contain plenty of caffeine even after they're spent. The caffeine, along with a high concentration of antioxidants in coffee grounds, helps to stimulate blood circulation to reduce puffiness 
and brighten the skin beneath the eyes. You can simply mix together the grounds with coconut oil and form a paste. Apply gently beneath your eyes and allow it to sit for 10 minutes. You can repeat this process daily for less eye baggage. It's a natural skin exfoliant. Rub it on your skin and it exfoliates. The temporary coffee scent will also linger on your skin and it makes for a very spa-worthy experience because we pay great loads of money for this. You can simply, again, combine with coconut oil, honey, and vanilla for dual action exfoliation hydration treatment. You can stimulate hair growth and strip away buildup. With daily use of hair products along with sebum and dead skin cell buildup, your hair can benefit from a good cleaning every now and then. You could use coffee grounds. Chunky texture helps to physically strip away buildup and it gives your hair more room to grow healthier while the caffeine can stimulate hair growth. Reduce the appearance of cellulite. Caffeine is often used in topical skin products as it stimulates blood flow and can penetrate the skin barrier. And because it helps in preventing excessive accumulation of fat cells, it's showing promise as anti-cellulite compound and believed to help. The next one is choose to read and not stream. This alone reduces carbon footprint. The next one is to use your artistic talents to spread awareness through your art. Artwork focused on saving and appreciating the planet can make a real difference. Earth Day Network's Artists for the Earth campaign connects artists, art organizations, and the public to engage on environmental issues. Through paintings and songs, you can inspire and encourage others to take action by voting green or fighting for conservation. No matter how far apart we are, art can help us relax and bring us closer together. You can repurpose materials for art from around the house and encourage your child to create something new, like jewelry, bags, or plant holders. They can even transform trash into treasure by creating a sculpture out of recyclables. Gather some inspiration from Earth Day Network's Artists for the Earth Gallery, and this, was, this will all be in the podcast notes below. The next one is to simply be interested in science. Be a citizen of science for change and improvement. Beginning in April 2020, Global Earth Challenge helped engage millions of people while integrating billions of data points from new and ongoing citizen science projects. Right now, they are trying to understand how insect populations like bees are changing. You can collect beta on bees today and support research on air quality. Or how about just watching Animal Planet and learning how you can help contribute to saving any species? Ask me anything about Shark Week. I will give you every fact. It's interesting. The Animal Planet channel is doing so well. And all of these ways that we can just support the wilderness, preservation, and saving Mother Earth as a whole. Just be interested in change. Be interested in science. The next one. Simply add a plant-based meal to your diet each day. There are so many things that we can do. The food that we eat is pushing the planet to the breaking point, and our food system accounts for more than a quarter of all greenhouse gases, making animal agriculture one of the largest contributors to climate change. You can avoid these added emissions by eating a plant-based diet or just simply making changes into your diet. One of the best things that individuals can do to combat this change is, again, eating a plant-based diet or just contributing that to your overall diet. It's been linked also to a general well-being and lowered risk of chronic diseases. Here are just a few things that you can do. For breakfast, make overnight oats with peanut butter or blueberry muffins and sub dairy for almond cashew soy milk and also sub eggs and oils for applesauce and bananas. Lunch, couscous with vegetables, rice with lentils and great spices, vegetable stew, fried rices, Pasta with frozen vegetables and veggie chili. Snacks, banana bread. Again, sub in almond milk, bananas, and applesauce for eggs and oils. Make black bean dip. And next, consider trying some of the meatless products out there in the marketplace, like Impossible Burger or the Boker Burger. The next one is to go green in power utilities. Making the switch to renewable energy. Opting to charge your devices with solar power is a nifty way to live off the grid and reduce the amount of electricity you're using. It's especially helpful for camping trips or any other time you want to keep your devices powered when you're far away from an outlet. 
Now, the switch to, to green power varies by situation and locale, but the EPA has a lot of resources to get started. It can be a commitment. You can create or offset your own energy through solar power installations. There is an upfront cost, but solar panel costs have been falling and the investment pays for itself over time through lower electricity bills. Plus, solar panels can actually increase a home's value. Although many of us feel powerless right now, we, rem we can remember that individual actions like switching to green energy can collectively lead to change. Next, volunteer for change. The real goal of Earth Day is to change the world around us for the better. Volunteering for Earth Day and Earth Month, or just any kind of Earth Day cause in general during the year, brings you back to the roots of your environmentalism. Building a planet that works better for everybody, you'll do this through voting, changing laws and leaders, updating school curriculums, supporting science, and inspiring your neighbors to make positive changes. When you sign up on EarthDay.org to be an Earth Day Network volunteer, You'll get a regular flow of resources, including ways to plan an event, chances to participate in citizen science, opportunities to engage with friends, and a platform to make your voice heard. There are also several uh, accounts on TikTok, particularly with millennials, spreading change all over the world. And on to the next one. I myself am a true science nerd. I love science. I was pre-med, pre-pharmacy, all the way through college before I switched to business. And that is to be interested in science. Science is a true guiding force. And though science can be intimidating, it's necessary for a society to understand and solve crises around us. In our coronavirus response, policy informed by the latest science could have softened the blow. Instead, we're playing catch up. Look at resources for preserving wildlife, reducing carbon footprint, test driving smart cars, new solar research, etc. So there are so many resources out there. Google it. Seek EarthDay.org or just look into Bill Nye the Science Guy. He's awesome. There are so many things that you can read about and science is so interesting. Just try to be smart and in the know because smart is sexy. Now on to the final two. Number 12 is reducing carbon footprint. I know that Canada is taking this very seriously and they're requiring companies to reduce their carbon. Learn the five R's of carbon footprint and that is refuse, reduce, reuse, rot, and recycle. Going zero waste is a great step towards combating climate change. Bike more and drive less. That helps your fitness, wellness, and the environment. Try to conserve water, which protects our waterways. Eat seasonally, locally, eat more plants. Switch to sustainable, clean energy. And the final one, and this is so cathartic for so many, plant a garden or forest. Grow everything yourself, seed, soil, and sun discovering the many healthful benefits of gardening. It fights disease, it builds strength, improves memory, boosts mood, reduces stress, helps addiction recovery, fosters human connections, heals and empowers. Not to mention the fact that it does wonders for the environment. Reducing carbon emissions and waste, growing your own food allows you to stop relying solely on traditional methods of purchasing your produce from a grocery store. Plants naturally clean the ground and the air. You can reduce cooling costs with well-placed trees and shrubs, and it's just beautiful. Growing your own food reduces carbon footprints. It prevents soil erosion. It replenishes nutrients in the soil. It helps reduce noise population. And it supports beneficial insects and birds. Now, I hope any of these 13 things that I gave you will inspire some creativity of your own Again, not only is it wonderful for the environment, but it's great for health, fitness, and wellness. From growing your own garden with your own nutritional products, your own organic produce, to biking outside and breathing in the fresh air, working on the cardio, and being with people that you love. Come up with some things of your own and share them back to me if you'd like. And you can always look at the website and the hashtags and the Instagram profiles that 
I put in the podcast notes. Thank you so much for listening to this, and let's help contribute to our Mother Earth, the only planet that has chocolate. And again, like I said in the beginning, bring your partner, your lover, refuse, recycle, refurbish, and reuse each other. Have a wonderful Earth Month, and thank you again for joining me on another episode of SoCal Sweat. We appreciate you for listening, and please subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary, Tuned In, or at Believe.com. You can reach out to me for any questions or topics you'd like covered on the show at Ann McDaniels or at Ann McDaniels Actress. And I'll see you next time on So Cows. If you're snacking on anything but tasty cake, you're making a huge Miss Cake. A fistful of chocolate-covered raisins? Miss Cake. A spoonful of peanut butter? Bigger Miss Cake. Or the worst Miss Cake of all, your kid's Halloween candy, and it's April. If it's not tasty cake, it's a Miss Cake. Because nothing satisfies like a perfectly sweet butterscotch crimpet. Or rich and creamy chocolate peanut butter candy cake. Tasty cake. Except no substitute. Thank you.